Performing 10 MHz B scan with the LXI cubed. Performing 10 MHz B scan of the posterior segment with the LXI cubed is easy, fast, and accurate. The first step is to ensure that the 10 MHz B scan probe is connected to the I cubed and to turn on the system. The patient screen is displayed. Type a patient ID and click Enter. With an existing patient, the previously entered data will automatically display. Entering a new patient ID prompts the user to answer yes to creating a new patient. As an alternative, the system can automatically generate a new patient ID. See option in the general tab under utilities. The new patient data can then be entered, followed by clicking save. Check that the patient information is complete on the summary screen. To begin an examination session, you must select the examiner as well as the physician ordering the exam. At times, the examiner and physician will be the same. A default examiner and physician may also be selected. At this point, it is possible to add a suspected diagnosis that will be saved in the patient's file. Click Begin Session to start the examination. The probe has supple membrane which will be placed in contact with the cornea if using the open eye technique or with the eyelid if using the closed eye technique. The probe has a silver line which shows the top of the screen to help orientate the user. Choose the eye to be examined by clicking on OD for the right eye or on OS for the left eye. By default, posterior B-scan mode is selected. Local anaesthetic drops are applied to the eye if the open eye technique is used. This technique provides better images as sound is absorbed by the eyelid and also ensures the operator knows exactly where the patient's gaze is directed. Place tear gel on the probe as a coupling gel to ensure good contact for the ultrasound and better images. Ultrasound does not travel through air. Press the foot pedal or F11 and the probe starts to scan at 25 frames per second. This gives real-time imaging of the movement of the eye and of any of its structures or pathologies. In order to be sure to completely scan the eye and not miss any pathology that may be present, the operator will usually follow a protocol. The eye is broken up into hours as on a clock face. Then, each hour is imagined as a line running from the cornea to the optic nerve rather like lines of longitude around the earth. The examination will be performed along those lines. This is a longitudinal scan. Or across those lines. This is a transverse scan. As the cornea and lens absorb ultrasound, these structures are usually avoided when doing a B scan. When they do need to be included in the picture, an axial scan is performed with the probe across the centre of the cornea. This can be horizontal axial or vertical axial. If a lesion is found, its position can be noted depending on where it is situated on one of the clock hour lines. Close to the ciliary body, at the aura serrata, before the equator, at the equator, behind the equator, closer to the posterior pole and at the posterior pole. These positions are like the lines of latitude on the earth and help to orientate the examiner and the referring physician. The operator will instruct the patient to look up, down, right and left in order to cover the whole length and breadth of the imaginary lines being examined. It is important to remember to always centre and be perpendicular to the lesion in the image to get the best picture. Each time the pedal is pressed or F11 is pressed to stop the scanning, the eye cube remembers the last 10 seconds or 254 frames. The operator can then go back frame by frame using the mouse or by turning the second black knob on the front panel to re-examine the different aspects and images of the pathology at their desired pace. The 254 frames can also be played as a movie. With its protocol function, the iCubed can record specific examination protocols to expedite labelling and storing of images.
This can also be helpful as a tool for users to easily follow any customised protocols from the drop-down list. On the eye cube, the gain can be adjusted after the picture has been frozen to better visualise the pathology in terms of its surroundings. It is possible to add a vector to the B mode image. The vector can be positioned anywhere on the image and displays one of the 256 scanning lines as an A scan. This A scan can also be displayed on its own with a microsecond scale to measure distance as a function of time. Measurements can be made in millimetres using the editing tools. Move the markers to the appropriate echoes to obtain the distance between them at the speed of sound appropriate for the tissue to be measured. In this example, 1,550 metres per second. Other editing tools are available on the B-Mode image. It is possible to position arrows and text boxes for educational or referral purposes. It is possible to measure distances and angles on the frozen picture. To save an image, the operator simply clicks on the second pictogram in the bar at the bottom right of the screen. If the protocol function is used, the image will be labelled automatically with the probe position. If not, the probe position can be entered at this point, either by clicking on the appropriate pictograms or typed in manually. The image that has been saved goes into the image tray for the eye being examined. A movie can also be stored. In order to save memory space, it is best to crop the sequence and only save useful images. Shorten the sequence by sliding the end markers along the bar and click on the fourth pictogram, Crop Movie. Before clicking on the third pictogram to save it. The icons on the lower left of the screen control how to play the movie. Hovering the cursor over each icon displays each of their functions. Images and movies in the image tray can be reloaded for further examination. Double click to load. It is also possible to examine images from a previous session performed on the same patient. As soon as patient examination is complete, clean the probe and place upright in the probe holder. For further information, please refer to the iCubed instruction manual available under the Help tab on the iCube system. Or visit the LX website at www.lx.com.